Hey, yo, check it. You heard LAZ, Gen Pop Gang in the building, Slim Blunt Gang in the building, Comment Gang. I need y'all to go to work on this. You heard? We bringing you that Brooklyn, that Brownsville history and legacy out here. You feel me? If y'all dudes ain't see that new movie I just dropped, Body Parts, the story of Turquoise Serial Killer in the Projects, if y'all ain't see that, y'all ain't see nothing, man. Go join my Patreon, $10 a month, $9.99 a month, you heard? And you're going to get to see the movie. You get all my exclusive music. I'm about to go in the crib right now and put in mad music work and upload mad songs onto the Patreon page, you feel me? Not only that, y'all going to catch that new exclusive series that I'm about to do, you heard? About to do a crazy series called... Before the partnership That's about my struggle in the rap game You heard? Before this YouTube grind So y'all make sure y'all check that out Shout out to my bro Shannon Briggs Shannon the Cannon Two time heavyweight world champion Boxing legend Shannon Briggs for plugging me in With the bro Vic Low, A.K.A. Thurston Howard III Brownsville legend Hip hop legend You heard? Low life pioneer Know what I mean? Listen up, y'all might learn something. Z-Man, Suicide Polo with the Ski Man. Let's get oh, it. Right. Let, let, let the check in. You know what I mean? This is going to be legendary, stuff. And I know I'm going to watch it like 500 times this shit. You know what I'm saying? Give me a shout out or something, son, please. Definitely. I mean, good looking for connecting me with the bro, too. Uh, dude, this, 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 look, come on, I watch every every show five times, lad. My wife be tripping and get mad at me. <laughs> you watch the same. No, son, listen. Bro, so you said you said you was the only nigga in the whole Brownsville with that black sheepskin in 84? No, I was the only nigga I ever seen with a black sheepskin. Period. Mm. I never seen it no place else. And I got my joint from Delancey. Mm. But I still never seen it. Nowhere I went, I never seen another person with a black sheepskin. And I had the black sheepskin hat. And I bought it like that. I got it off the last year. I went up there, copped it. I'm 14 years old. My step pops went with me. I copped the black joint. Went back to friends where I'm hanging. I'm rocking my shit all the time. School and all that. Like I said, hanging out with people. They lined me up, people in my projects, you know. And I'm young at the time, so I don't know what's going on. I'm cool. I'm hanging out with older dudes. I got a boom box. I rock gazelles. I got motherfucking goose bombers with the fur collars and all that. So, you know, I sw I'm a nigga who I can switch coats throughout the day. And the way I know niggas lined me up, because all day I was rocking my goose bomber, carrying the, the boom box, right? And it's cold. It's winter time, so yeah, you know, hope you hang in the street or the park in the project. So niggas like, yo, man, you look funny in that goose, man. You should be rocking that sheepdog, man. Let's get flying. And you know, ain't none of these niggas rocking sheepdogs or nothing. I'm the nigga. I'm um, flipping coat, but I'm young. I'm 14 years old. So I go switch. I put on the black sheepdog. I come back out. I even put the boombox upstairs. And I remember we went walking through Bristol Park. And I stopped to take a piss. We all went walking through. As soon as I went walking through, somebody ran up behind me and threw the hammer to my head. So Nick was like, all right, don't make me shoot through the head, whatever. And he, he pulled off the coat off my back and he took the hat and then he ran. You know what I mean? And everybody like, oh, you know, everybody acting like they don't know what's up or what happened. I said, I'm 14 years old. I'm, I'm in the street. But I'm not in the street yet. I'm, I'm still just learning or experiencing what the street is. All I know is I want to be out in the street with everybody else. I'm a hip hop dude. I'm a break dancer. I'm all of that at the time. So I'm well known in my projects for the break dancing nigga who's super nice. You know what I mean? I battled everybody on every side of the project. So, but I learned big lessons from that. You know what I mean? On getting stuck, on getting set up and shit like that. Another time, my sister had a boyfriend. I remember a nigga was hanging in our crib and everybody got drunk and fell asleep. Right? This is like in 1985. I lived in the crib in the projects by myself. And we all fell asleep drinking fucking half a gallon of Canadian Ace. 
you know, in the garbage. And woke up, my sister boyfriend had cleaned the nigga out. Turntables, taken out the crib. Another sheep skin, I had the beige one this time. Stolen out my motherfucking closet. Tangles, everything. This is before the low ever. You know what I mean? So, when the low ever came, None of that shit ever happened to me because I already knew about it. I learned that shit in the sheepskin era and, and the Dita suit era. It, it went down the same way. It was still the same lifestyle and all of that. You know what I mean? Remember, everybody at Kango get snatched. And you know, I came from that. The ski hat get snatched. Niggas was snatching fake Gucci ski hats on a regular on a regular basis. Fake as hell. And niggas are snatching them and taking them from you in public school and shit like that. Hell yeah. So I, I know what it is to be a victim. So I learned what it is to be the culprit too, you know what I mean? Cause in Brownsville, I think that's what Brownsville made you. You either the, the, the nigga getting robbed or the nigga robbing. Like they force you, you gotta be fucking robbing. Yeah, you get victimized so much, you get tired of that shit and then you start victimizing motherfuckers. Shit is ridiculous. I remember niggas took my ski hat on the on the 60 bus going, to, going down Rockaway, like from behind somebody just snatched my shit. Turned around, everybody acting like they ain't, they ain't see nothing. You feel me? My shit gone. I forgot what. I think I had the crispy Raiders joint. Nigga snatched my shit. I was tight. So you know, Brownsville do go anywhere. You know what I mean? I went to all the projects everywhere. You know, I had people like everybody I met from jail. We I go hang with them in their projects when we home. Everywhere, from the Bronx to Manhattan to Queens, throughout Brooklyn. You know what I mean? Sumner, Fort Greene. East New York, I hung with everybody I ever did it with once we came home and we kept the bond and shit like that. Even niggas who wasn't Brownsville niggas and all that. You know, like I said, Gio, right? Giovanni from Howard. You know, my man, I always seen Gio in Brownsville, but I ain't but I ain't never rocked with him like that. I knew him, I knew his face and all that. So I seen him coming through through the through the halls on Rikers Island. So I stepped on, I seen him on the motherfucking visit. He going to be a visit, right? And I ain't really known him. Me and him ain't really rocked. But when I seen him, I was like, yo, what up, son? You fucked my girl, right? Because he did fuck my girl while I was locked up. Well, it's some other shit, right? But on some blasting shit, because, you know, I'm a real nigga. I know what time it is. I'm, nigga, this ha- it wasn't like my girl, my girl. So me and son laughing. We walked the halls together, and I was like, you good? He just came in. So I'm like, yo, come with me by my house. I got a store, I got all up there. I went, got the nigga mad bags of of tang and motherfucking Kool-Aid and all kind of cookies and soaps and make sure I lace the up cause he a Brownsville nigga, you know what I mean? After that, me, I got transferred up north to motherfucking on that same bed. I got transferred to, to I, it was Riverview Correctional Facility. It's the shit on. When you in the sixth building on Rikers Island, <clears throat> niggas will send you on a plane up north near Canada to a new jail. But on a motherfucking plane, the shit with the with the little propellers and all that, with a whole you and like twenty other dudes shackled up with the big state troopers standing there with the shotguns and all that, getting on this plane that looked like it's it's not gonna really. I heard them planes was looking real raggedy. Mm-hmm. So yo, when I went up north. You know, I'm up there for a while. And then the nigga Giovanni got transferred up north. Where I was at? That not only that, they put the nigga sleep right next to me in my dorm. So his cubicle was right next to mine. So this nigga, you know, that became my man. We used to hold it down together, eat together, try to get the nigga to work out. Ask him, because he work out like crazy now. And I'm like, nigga, I could never get you to work out, dude. <laughs> Let me ask you though, like, when was the first time you actually saw some polo? I'm talking about some low that really changed your whole, like, when did that shit happen when all of a sudden polo became in style? I mean, it, it was, it was kind of always there, but slightly, you know what I mean? Not to the exaggerated shit it became. Yeah, because I remember me and my bro John Dilly was talking about that the other day. I remember when you couldn't wear no horse shit in the Ville. Like, if you just had a low shirt with a little horse on it, niggas would be like, niggas would be making horse noises and shit behind your back. 
Yeah, nah, niggas will shoot you down. That was when you get shot down. <laughs> but the, the, as far as like, I say heavy, heavy, 86. This started coming heavy and the 86 heavy. Like everybody was doing it here and there throughout New York and all that. But by 86 and by 87, it was almost dominant. 88, it was done. They grew the world out this bitch. You know what I mean? So like, what was the first piece that you saw that you was like, oh shit, what the fuck is that? Like, what type of low was it? It was mostly like the color striped horsey rugby's and shit. Them was those was the super hard shit. And then remember they started putting the unions on them and the crowns. And then when they started blowing them up, it was a wrap. You know, like a big crown, like poof, big flag. So everything from the gate, man. You know. I fucked with a lot of the Gucci too, like with low niggas. They wasn't just low niggas, you know. That wasn't no just a low nigga. <clears throat> that happened just because of low lights. I touched everything. You know what I mean? Before that, I touched all the Pierre Cardin uh Valor joints. Just as much as the the Fila Super Laws, you know? Mm. The nigga you know, everything. Sergio Tashini, the the cars, you no know, Sherlins. Leather blazers, you know, especially from the back yeah. to all that era. I did leather blazers hard with beaver kangos, gazelles, sometimes yeah. the sheeny frames, yeah. the valley competition sneakers. We went hard. I went hard with Calvin Klein's, yeah. Gas Lee. You know how dominant Lee was in New York. Lee was everything to me. To me, Lee was the most and the biggest brand ever in in. New York hip hop style as far as jeans are concerned. Cause nothing dominated like me in the early days of hip hop. Definitely. Mm. I had the pinstripe shits, the two tone shits, yeah. I had them all. Word, word, word. Oh, done in every form of fashion you could imagine. Straight leg my leaves, permanent crease my leaves, the starch them. I did everything. Cut them in the shorts, had the matching jackets. I did the motherfucking graffiti pieces on the jacket. I did my own pieces all the time. I changed my shit every week on my Lee jacket. Niggas oh, fucked the niggas fuck the whole Lee shit up when niggas started snatching Lee patches. Niggas started being scared to wear them shit. Nah, that was when Lee's was corny. So, like, it's illegal for you to wear Lee's. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, it got to the point where, yo, if you wore Lee's, nigga. That, that was like embarrassing. My shorty in school was still wearing Lee's. She was bad, but she didn't give a fuck. She was still wearing Lee's. And I couldn't even rock with her and, and go home. <laughs> she had all the bare Lee's. Huh? <laughs> Rest of school like, oh, that's a big violation. But nah, man, that history of fashion is is crazy because you know a lot of a lot of the fashion of today's world that's mad worldwide popular. That shit came from small ghettos. And the jails. Then is I didn't even know. I didn't even know it was a whole chapter of, of Philly low lifes. Oh, they, they was first. They was probably the first chapter ever outside of um, outside New York. Like to come at my man Booster Billy, who one of the founders of low life. He went to Philly and he turned the whole Philly out. You know what I mean? So he created the first outside chapter ever. Mm. And they big as hell, you know. The low dominates really too. As far as polo wise, fashion and and, and the hood and hip hop. Who started the low life? Well, low life was started by a bunch of us. You know what I mean? As far as founders, um, there was a lot of niggas already doing polo, boosting. Thousands of niggas already going hard. They was already polo crews and all that but low life is when certain niggas got together and created the bond that turned into low life and then everybody they fucked with ain't low life and shit like that who was ralphie's I, kids that was something totally different ralphie kids all was became low life you know what i mean ralphie kids are from st john's and utica mm -hmm. ralphie kids are um Founders of low life as well, like so was Marcus Garvey. Ralphie's kids had their own history in polo and boosting and all that, the same as Marcus Garvey does. So Ralphie's kids and and 
and Marcus Garvey, when we came together, that's what became low lifes. Nobody was a low life before that. When we came together as one, that's when it became low life. I I named it low life. I'm the I'm the founder of the name low life of bringing us together and holding it down, not just boosting and all, getting busy, holding it down. Don't let niggas rob you. Fight back. Don't run, motherfucker, because niggas was running and all of that. And and when when Brownsville niggas came in and a lot of niggas from St. John, some niggas was super hard body with it, as far as moving around. And being a low life and having niggas respect the low life name. You know what I mean? My nigga Boost and Billy was definitely one of them. You know, he one of them that carried it to Philly. And he's a nigga like an uh, everywhere nigga. He's not just a Crown Heights nigga. He's everywhere. You'll see him in Harlem. That's where he's from? He's from Crown Heights? Yeah, he's from Crown Heights. He's from the St. John's uh, side of things. You know what I mean? Frankie Boo. I know y'all heard of Frankie Boo. Frankie Boo was another founder. You know what I mean? Disco. You know, Rack, even Rack Low, he was a little kid at the time, but he was there. He was part of the formation of what made it happen. You know what I mean? Of, of dudes, of, you know, learning to trust each other and respect each other. And everybody was different. Different characters, different styles. Everybody wasn't tough. Everybody wasn't smart. Everybody wasn't fly. You know what I mean? There were so many different characters and, and different, you know, resources that a lot of the members and dudes had, you know. My nigga Bar Kim. Bar Kim was originally from Queens. He was one of the founders, but he moved in Brownsville. He he moved in with me in my crib. The first time he ever came to the Ville and ran with us, he never left. And that nigga was just like a Brownsville nigga, the wildest. You know what I mean? <laughs> You know, those who may not know all of the details, people always thought that, you know, low life started in Marcus Garvey Village. It started with both. It had to be both. Without both, there's no low life. Not one of them started it or one of us started it. It's both. Always been that way. If not, it was just Ralphie Kids or it was just um, MGV, like United Shoplifters and all that on, on Brownsville side. <laughs> Because like I said, even the whole Van Dyke was with us when it started. You know what I mean? It's, they was there before Low Life started. Millie Moe, Moosey, Kaiki, Seaguard, you know what I mean? All of them rocked with us on a day-to-day -day basis. They went out, they got busy, they boosted, they did everything that Low Life do. If you look in the pictures, they in all the pictures as well. You know what I mean? Seaguard was one of my best friends. From Van Dyke, you know, rest in peace. Son, son got killed as well. Mm. You no, know, but it was well out here, man. 